button. Um, okay, so we're recording. This entire session is going to be done uh, via screen share so that you can see, you can actually get in and play with the uh, the application. I have a few slides, kind of introductory slides, and then we're going to get in and talk about the actual application that we're going to look at today. Cool? Does that sound good? I'm going to try and keep you up in the screen as much as possible um, so that uh, I can see your chat. If you have questions or comments, feel free to just uh, type those in there or, you know, just pop off of mute and just say, hey, Chris, I have a question, and we'll, we'll, we'll address it. So, um, so let me go and share my desktop right now. Okay. Uh, so just to confirm real quick, you're seeing everything on my desktop. You're seeing me move you off to the right-hand side so that uh, – I don't want you to do that. No. There we go. Let me minimize that. Okay. And let me pull up the slide deck. There we go. Okay. Okay. So this is the slide deck. Um, let me just make sure you're up here in the side. Okay, great. Um, so I do uh, my presentations. I really like to do my presentations in Google Slides. If you want, uh, now would be the time to... Whoops. There we go. Now would be the time to pull up this URL or break out on a second device. If you have a phone or an iPad or a, some sort of a portable device, you can scan that QR code or you can open up uh, you know, Safari or Chrome or whatever and you can type in that URL and you'll have access to the entire slide deck. Sometimes I have hyperlinks in here that um, you might find useful if you want to go back and look at them. But uh, And I also like to use a URL shortener um, called bit.ly slash ditch the agenda book 2017. That's the URL for the slide deck. So bit.ly slash ditch the agenda book 2017. Um, I'm vamping here for a second to give you a chance to get break out your QR code scanner or to type that in. You could also just flip out your, your phone and take a picture of it or take a, um, a screen capture of this right now. Uh, uh, and uh, you'll have it. But that's the URL. Um, plus, of course, I'm recording this so you can go back and watch the the, uh, the video at any time. But cool. What we're going to be talking about today is just that, uh, how to make sure that students never miss another assignment, how we can ditch that agenda book, and really what we're going to look at is a tool called Google Keep and how it helps you do all of that. All right. So, um, there's the name of the, the title of the presentation. My name is Chris Bouguet, and I work in assistive technology. Assistive technology is really technology uh, viewed through the lens of how it can help people with special needs. Um, and so that's really how I view all of technology, and everything you're going to hear today is talking about it from that perspective. It's like, well, okay, how is this going to help kids? Um, you'll find that helping kids with special needs really helps all kids. So... Uh, a couple facts to get uh, to uh, to set the front framework. Some uh, research to get your brain thinking is that your poor brain hates you. Uh, there's maybe a misconception out there that you know you hear people say, oh, "I'm a really good multitasker. I'm really good at multitasking." Well, the truth is that that's not true at all. Um, there's lots of research. You'll see there's two hyperlinks here that say that uh, multitasking really is not uh, when you have when you're trying to do two things at once. You're really only good at one of those things. Uh, you, if I was trying to watch TV and write an email. Um, I might get sucked into that TV show and not do a great job on the email. Or I might ignore the TV show and miss the plot and the characters. What'd she say? What'd she say? Because I was busy typing my email. Even though I might have both going on at the same time, my brain can really only tunnel into one uh, one channel, everything into one uh, activity at once. Um, I would also add that uh, your memory... Your short-term memory sucks. Our short-term memory, my short-term memory sucks. You can remember maybe five to seven things before you forget, uh, when you start to really tap out. Um, this is why you um, make grocery lists. 
and why we have to-do lists because you can't remember everything that you try and remember. I would also add that um, there's a phenomenon that happens um, that when you walk through a portal, you forget whatever it was uh, where you were. So imagine how you're driving home and you're thinking about something and you pull into your garage or your driveway and you get out of the car and you walk into the house and then you're like, wait a second, what was I just thinking about in the car? What was that thing? I just had this great thought. It was I was going to do this in my class, but now I can't remember. What was it? And the, the phenomenon is they say when you change environments, you actually walk through a portal, your brain shifts and you forget. Um, and so if that's happening to all of us, that's happening even more to students who might think they can multitask or think they can hold a, a, a lots of information in their brain. Oh, I just remember all my assignments, right? Um, I can't tell you how many high school students I've talked to where I'm like, well, so how do you organize your assignments? I don't know. I just remember them all. Yeah, you, nah, nah, are you? Are you doing a great job on that? Because I know the science says you really can't re remember all that stuff. Um, some other things that your brain really needs is a way to get your ideas out. So uh, have you ever had that thing where you're laying in bed at night and you have this thought and you, you just can't sleep, you're rolling around, you're thinking, I can't, I can't. But as soon as you go over and you write it down, you get it out, ah, now I can fall asleep. Right? Your brain can't really rest and relax until it gets the thoughts out. Um, plus, your brain needs a way of organizing information um, because you're taking in so much media, especially in today's day and age. How do you organize it and remember it all and then be able to find it again later? Right? Um, so it's an idea you might have, but also a resource that uh, is coming in. So it's either generated by you or some input that's coming into you that you need to be able to organize and find. Not just us as teachers or as humans, but as uh, as students as well. And then again, in our in our sort of uh, global society where we're trying to teach uh, students to become digital citizens, one of those big C's is, uh, is collaboration and communication. So if I have a resource that I've either created or found, how do I then share that resource so that other people can collaborate with me on it um, or that I can communicate it to other people? So sharing resources and sharing ideas is just as a big of, of an idea. So how do we do all of that? Well, traditionally the way we've done that is maybe used a um, a file a filing cabinet, right? I mean, imagine you go to a staff meeting and your principal says, uh, whips out a piece of paper and on that piece of paper it says, here's a bunch of math resources that I'd like you all to have, right? And so they, the principal passes out this, uh, a, a, this piece of paper to all of you and you're like, okay, now I got this piece of paper. You go back to your room or your office or wherever you, or you go back home. And you're like, where am I going to put this piece of paper so I can find it later? It's got math resources on it. Well, let's put it in the filing, in the file cabinet. Well, the first decision you have to make is which filing cabinet. Maybe you have more than one. All right, but maybe you have a filing cabinet just for resources from school. But then you got to decide which drawer do I put it in. And drawer A or drawer B? Oh, I'll put it in drawer B. Well, okay, now you got to decide which folder do you put it in? Do you put it in the math resources folder? Um, but when you look at the actual piece of paper, it's got uh, fractions on it. It's got resources for fractions, but it's also got fractions for algebra. So do you put it in the algebra folder? Or do you put it in the fractions folder? Or do you put it in the math resources folder? But wait a second, you also got it from your administrator and it's an important memo from your administrator. Should it go in the important memos from administrators folder? Uh, so then you put it, you make a decision. I'm gonna put it in this particular folder and now you forget about it because you don't need it right now. You need it when you're looking for those math resources later. So three weeks from now, three months from now, you um, go and get that math resources and you're like, wait a second, where did I put that? Now let's see, it came from my administrator. So did I put it in the administrator folder or did I put it in the math resources? Folder? And now you got to go hunting for it, right? Um, w this worked really well back in the day when we didn't have another system, but the new system is not being able to put it in a certain place where you can find it again. I don't care about finding it again by, by remembering where I put it. I live in a digital world. We live in a digital world where things should now be searchable. So no matter where I decided to put it, I can go over to a search bar, type it in math, type in principal's name, type in the date that I got it, whatever, and I'll, it'll be able to pull up the, the resources and find it. 
when I needed to find um, the slide deck for this particular presentation, I didn't go, let's see, did I put it in my digital learning day folder under, or did I put it in my Google Keep folder, or did I put it in my, uh, my presentations folder? I did make a decision, I put it there, but when I needed it again, I just typed in uh, Google, my Google Drive, typed in a search, Google Keep, and there's my presentation, it popped right up, and I was good to go, I was ready to roll. Let me ask you this. Let me get some feedback because there's a lot of me talking here for the last few seconds. Let me ask you. Take a look at this agenda book. Do you Is this the agenda book that you use? Do you use these in your school? Casey's writing. No? You don't use agenda books? Casey, what do you use? Claire? She says no. What do you use? Oh, okay, so you use a paper-based agenda book, but it looks something, so it's not this particular one, but it's something like this, you use a, uh, an agenda like that? Yeah, okay, gotcha, Claire. Um, Casey, same thing, I'm guessing, as she's typing? Uh, yeah, same, okay, right? And let me ask you, do the agenda books they use, um, I said I, I work as a student, I work with students with disabilities. What disability do you think this particular student has? Right? Took a picture of, uh, of, of a student's agenda book. Dysgraphia maybe, Claire? Okay, what else? What, what else? Is, what does other people think? What disabilities does this student maybe have? Casey's saying, what's she typing? Autism, maybe autism, right? Okay, could be. You're both wrong, by the way. It's not neither of those, right? You want to take another stab at it? Anyone else? What do you think that uh, this particular disability might be? Right. Go ahead, take a stab. Go ahead. Uh, an ADHD, maybe? I don't think so. Nope, not this particular student. Dyslexia? Nope. Nope. Think about it from a different perspective. This is my son. This is a sixth grader. Josh was about to say, what are we going to say, Josh? I'm, I'm, oh, what's he typing? I can't wait to see what he writes. What do you think it is? Maybe a physical handicap like cerebral palsy or something? Maybe, maybe. But this particular student doesn't have a disability as far as we know. Uh, this is just typical sixth grade handwriting because my son uh, never had instruction in handwriting. We don't do handwriting instruction, right? He's a sixth grade boy, exactly, right? Um, and how many third graders, fourth graders, eleventh uh, graders have handwriting just like this? Um, because we're using a system that we grew up with, that worked well for us. I mean, we, this is how we maintained it. But one, he says trouble, even if he did write it down, like. Um, he might have trouble going back and reading it. Maybe if uh, someone scri scribed it for him and wrote it down because we knew ha how bad that handwriting was. I mean, you can see right here, his teacher actually checks off on it. Um, but if someone actually wrote it down and then that student did have dyslexia, they wouldn't be able to necessarily read the word that was written down. Um, and how does this make him feel about himself? I mean, he knows that this looks like, you know, terrible handwriting. You know, he that this is not uh, great, you know. Um, so he struggles with it. it, like I think many students struggle with it. And in case you just think this is sort of a one-off thing, the, the agenda book, um, let me share with you, this is pretty much his daily life. He comes home with worksheets like this where he um, has to fill in, you know, this is a science uh, worksheet where he's got to write uh, definitions of science stuff and answer science questions that way, all in handwriting. Um, and he, this is a student that doesn't have a disability. Imagine students that, as far as we know, maybe... Uh, imagine students that do have disabilities and what we're setting them up to do because of the agenda book, because of worksheets like this. Right? And just in case you think that's another one-off, this is a, just a general picture of any given day where you dump the backpack out and it's paper after paper. So what I'm really advocating for is a is, is a change in how to write those things in the agenda book, is, is, is to ditch the agenda book altogether and use a tool called Google Keep or something like it, some sort of note-taking note -taking application. So th what you're looking at now, I, I switched over to my live Google Keep. I've been using it for over a year now. And basically the way it works is anytime I have a thought, anything, anytime I know I have to remember something, and um, I do a bunch of trainings with this at, uh, with, with students as well, and show them how when a teacher gives them assignment, they can just 
they, they jump over here um, to this website or of course it's an application on their phone and it syncs up with uh, with their phone as well uh, both iOS and uh, Droid app um, so you download the app you have you sign in with your Google account um, want to spend too much time about getting Google accounts but if you're over the age of 13 you can have a personal Google account and of course if you're in Loudoun County Public Schools um, some schools have uh, Google accounts uh, that they've set up uh, called rogue schools they have their own domain and then um, there's of course the the, the, the larger Loudon one that you can ask Jason Roby get permission from your uh, principal and you can sign up and get uh, your students accounts uh, through that that modality and then you maybe you're working at a school that is already a Google school and you already have accounts so it could be a whole nother presentation on how to get Google accounts but I'm going to work under the assumption that you and your kids already have Google accounts so you sign in with your Google account I uh, have something I, I want to remember, like uh, something that came out of my own brain or uh, something that came into into my brain from someone else, like a teacher giving me an assignment. And I might just type in um, complete uh, biology work um, uh, work project the life cycles life cycle right. Um, so, because that was the assignment my teacher gave me. I can just hit done, boom, and it automatically f flows down into this list of, think of it like a brain dump. It's just me puking up ideas out of my brain or that are coming into me and I want to keep. They just show up here like a, like a stream of consciousness. I don't have to worry about organizing it. It's not about organizing it. It's about getting it out of my brain. It is being organized because all I have to do is go back and search it. If I need to find anything that's related to uh, biology, I just type in biology and there's any note I've ever made that's related to biology. Now, still, without doing some sort of organization, that can make, make people feel a little uncomfortable. So let me just go back to my notes here, find that note that I had, and say maybe I do want to organize it a, a little bit. You don't have to, but maybe you do. So. There's some options down here. You can see there's these icons, and one of them under the more is to say um, add a label. And so because this particular um, note has to do with biology, I might type in biology, or you can see that I've already created a label called biology. Label they, it, Google. Uh, Keep calls it labels. You may have heard of it as tagging or hashtags. Uh, you'll see, you'll note I use those uh, interchangeably. But because of the vernacular that uh, Google Keep uses, it's called uh, a label. So uh, I, I could type in biology because it has to do with biology. I could type in that this is uh, related to uh, maybe it was an idea that I had for my biology fourth block fourth block class. Uh, it's related to them, so I could type that in. Um, it's also related to projects I have to do. So look, oh, I already have a projects label. I'll add that there. Um, and what other? What's another thing? Oh, it's related to science. So let me type in science. Look, anything it's related to, I can add these labels, and you'll notice these gray boxes are appearing. So when I hit done, it puts it there, and there's those gray boxes. And you'll note in mine that there are other gray boxes, like. Uh, uh, I'm one of the people that put together the strategy a day calendar. It's a little desktop calendar that we put that we give out, um, and uh, we have to generate content for that. Whenever I have an idea for a, a, a strategy a day calendar slide, I add that label, and when I click on any of those, it automatically siphons it all together. So now I'm it's stripped away all the other nonsense, and I'm just looking at my calendar slides ideas. Um, I work in augmentative communication, you know, communication devices where people, uh, students touch buttons and that talks for them, like Stephen Hawking, you know. Um, so as I'm doing research on that and I'm finding information, I just click on my, I, you know, I, I enter a note in Google Keep and there's all my AAC thoughts, right? Here's all my biology third block ideas. Here's my biology fourth block ideas. I, it's everything is organized based on labels. If I want to, and I can go back and edit and add labels and delete labels and change all that if I want to. Cool. Is that a cool way of kind of organizing your thoughts and be able to search them? Organizing a student can organize their their um, notes that way. Um, that's one of the features. Let me just jump over and make sure. People, yes. Cool. Um, that's some of the features. Let me show you some more. Um, when I go back to the notes, um, and I've created this uh, note uh, that's complete biology work project, that might be super important. 
Like that's coming up. I need that to be at the top of the list. I can't afford to have that get lost in all my nonsense down here. So what I can do, because it's important, is I can add a pin uh, to it, which pins it up to the top. So you can see here that these are some other things that I've pinned. Now, okay, I finished this reading pages 33 to 36. I can just archive it, um, and it's gone. Gets it out of there. I can unpin something if I if I don't want it to be pinned there anymore. But it keeps it pinned to the top. One of the other um, uh, features is that uh, it allows me to, let's say here, this is the beginning of a, of a checklist of things I need to do, right? Um, I can jump over to here and it says show checkboxes. And so now this kind of turns it into a to-do list. And sometimes when I advocate or show this to teachers and say, you know, this is how you can kind of ditch your, you, you write your ideas down on a, on a, your to-do list on a piece of paper and they're like, yeah, but I really like that satisfaction of crossing things off, Chris. You know how good it feels when I grab my pen and just cross stuff off? Well, that's exactly how this works. You click on it, it crosses it off, giving you that same sense of satisfaction that I completed something, you know, I can cross that off my to-do list. Um, so uh, it, it, you can create to-do lists like that and cross things off as you go. Uh, one of the other nice features that I have that, that it has is that it interfaces because it's digital uh, and because we're working in a Google environment, we have Read and Write for Google Chrome. That's something that uh, as teachers you can get it for free. It's an extension that you can get for free. Um, as if you're already in the Google domain, if you already have a, if you're using, logged in with your Google account through LCPS, you already have that. Uh, it's it's this purple puzzle piece that that hovers up here. Uh, next time you log into Google Chrome, uh, when, you, when I mean log in, you log in up here as you. You'll see that extension. You can now, students can then use this uh, text-to-speech feature. So if they're having trouble reading, like what is this? Work on, work on, uh, uh, I don't know what that word is. Well, I hit the hover button. I just hover over that text. I just hover over that text. Look how easy. I mean, I think it's wonky because I already showed it. Um, Give me one second. Let me just refresh my screen, and then it'll work. Come on, refresh. Okay, there we go. Yep, there it is. Okay. So let me pull up my read and write toolbar again. And there we go. Okay, so now I turn on my hover speech and I hover over it. Cool. So anytime I have trouble reading any particular text, I can hover over my note and boom, what did I try and say? One of the other cool features it has is that you can, um, on the app, you can record your voice um, and it'll do speech to text. So I'm going to record a note here um, on my phone and it's going to say, so hit record, it says speak now. And so I'm going to record like I have this idea for using Google Keep for the AT Tips cast, one of the podcasts that I do. And I hit uh, stop. And I send it to my Google Keep, and the next time it syncs up, it's going to show up. You'll, you'll notice that it showed up right down here. And I was recording on my phone. It sunk here. Right? And wait a second. When I read that out loud, how did my how did the speech to text work? Speech to text work. I mean, it did okay. It speaks now, and I'm going to record. What is this? I said AT Tips Cast. Oh, not bad. But if I did uh, if I did struggle with um, reading this, you'll note the little play button. I can click on it and. It, Right. So now if I even if the speech to text didn't work really well, if it, it kind of mucked it up, I could go back and hear the actual audio. And as far as I know, um, this is the only tool that does both of those. Like OneNote allows you to record your voice. Um, uh, Evernote allows you to record your voice. And but I don't know that it does speech to text. So and I could be wrong. That could be a, a new feature that has been added. Um, but this kind of syncs them together. So. And then the one last thing um, is that I want to show you 
is in the last uh, few minutes here is this reminders feature. So here I've got, let's bring back my biology project. All right, so I've written down that I have to um, complete this biology project and, but okay, when does it do? Let's say it's due on, the teacher says it's due, uh, due uh, Monday, right? So I'm gonna work on it on Saturday, right? Right down here, one of the icons says, remind me. And you'll note that that icon is a hand with a little ribbon around it, um, or a piece of yarn or a string, which sort of sig uh, signifies that uh, you are, you need to remember something, right? That's why it's called remind me. And so I'm gonna click remind me, and it's gonna say, okay, Chris, it looks like you're trying to set up a reminder of some sort. Um, what, uh, where, what do you want that reminder to be? Uh, when do you want to be reminded? So just for giggles, I'm going to say um, tomorrow at 9 o'clock or at 8 o'clock. I can pick a date and time. Let's, actually, let's make it. Let's make it 9. 9 a.m. And hit save. Okay, so it's going to remind me tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I hit save. Okay, and then I hit done. Right, so it says, you'll note it's a little reminder. I can look at all my reminders. It's organized that way, so any reminders. But the cool feature, the, the cool factor that I want to show you here is that when I jump over to my Google Calendar, right over here, you notice I just created that. It's synced to my Google Calendar, so you can see that I have to study for a biology test and I have to complete my biology project. It's right there on my Google Calendar as a reminder. Now, what does that mean as a reminder? Why, why is that different than an event or a note? Well, that little hand with a piece of string around it, if you made a little reminder for yourself with a piece of string, that string stays on your finger until you pull it off, right? That's the same thing with the reminder. This reminder, uh, when tomorrow comes and goes and I didn't do anything, I didn't actually interface with this, I didn't mark it as done or delete it, that reminder is going to jump over to Sunday, and it's going to jump over to Monday, and it's going to jump over to Tuesday. It's going to continue to pester me, just like that piece of yarn would be continuing on my string or continue on my finger, until I interact with it and do something with it, and which is a, a tremendously huge way of helping students remember to get stuff assignments done. Right, uh, which again brings me back to the title. So. Uh, we have one minute left. The thing, the last thing I'll say is that notice this collaborator button. Uh, I talked about how it's searchable, how it's shareable, how you can collaborate. I can add collaborators here, so I can type in person somebody. Um, and uh, you know, if I'm working in right now, I'm in that domain. But if I was in my LCBS domain, I'm sure Josh would pop up. Or let me see, I can pop. Let's see if Mark Nichols pops up. There's Mark Nichols, right? Because I've worked with him before and shared things before. I can add him as a collaborator. Now we can both be working in the same, uh, the same note. So uh, that's Google Keep in a nutshell. Uh, Questions, comments, concerns, what do you think? Do you see how this could help students kind of uh, never miss an assignment again, ditch that agenda book, work in the 21st century when, when students say, hey, I've, I've lost my agenda book, I left it back at, uh, at my locker. Oh, I left my agenda book back at school, it's in my desk. You don't need the agenda book anymore. Students very rarely forget their phones at school. And even if they did lose or break their phone, it's saving in the cloud. You can get to the internet and you can get to all your thoughts and all your um, messages. Yeah. Never, right? Yeah, exactly. They never lose their phone. And even, said, even if they did, they can find it again. So, Any other questions? We're at our... We've hit the 12 o'clock mark, but I'm happy to, to, to stay for a second if you have any other questions or comments or, or concerns. Or kudos. <laughs> yeah, I think, my, Josh, my advice to everybody who participated in this today, try it over spring break, you know, just muck with it for a little bit. Um, use it to do your, uh, your, your shopping list or something like that and see how it works, you know. I think uh, as a way of getting thoughts out, it can't be beat. All right, everybody, enjoy playing with it. You have my contact information in the slides, and of course you'll have this whole um, uh, video that you can go back and get it, get again. My name was Chris Bouguet. Feel free to reach out to me, ask any questions. Happy to work with you in the future. All right, everybody, enjoy the rest of Digital Learning Day and enjoy your spring break.
Bye, everybody.